Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting a semi-abstract scene of a sort of deserted cottage. It's going to be a sort of winter scene and as I say I'm going to paint the background in a semi-abstract way using the wet in wet technique. I'm using Milford cold pressed paper. It's taped to my board with ordinary decorator's masking tape and my board's at an angle of about 45 degrees so the paint will run and flow downwards. Um, I'm wetting my page with clean water using a large goat hair Chinese calligraphy brush. I found this online a couple of years ago. Um, you can probably find similar large calligraphy brushes online if you look, but any large wash brush will do. This is yellow ochre, a lovely rich warm colour, and I'm just going to create a sort of a sky and a landscape that's quite loose um, that I can then paint my cottage into. Now adding into my sky to get this nice atmospheric colour, I'm mixing indigo, Payne's grey, there's a little bit of um, burnt sienna and some alizarin crimson, um, but there's quite a bit of indigo as you can see that blue is really blending with all the colours and it's running down the page. Um, a quick mist with my water misting spray gets the paint to run even more and then I can turn the board round um, either 90 degrees like I have here or you can turn it upside down and um, stop the paint from running all the way down the page. It's now running across the page and settling out a bit more. I can now lay it flat and just go in and add a little bit more detail with some spattered paint in yellow ochre and indigo. This will mostly softly diffuse into the damp paper and um, it'll just give me some more texture in the foreground, um, a little bit more variety. I'm looking for an interesting abstract background wash over which to paint some slightly more realistic features once it's dry. Now those little um, specks and spots of spatter are reminding me of flowers so I'm going to use the corner of a chopped up plastic store card to etch in um, the impression of some grasses or stems and leaves etc for these flowers that the spatter is reminding me of and that should just give me a little bit of something and nothing detail in the foreground. And once that's in, I shall leave it alone. I won't touch it again. I'll let it dry completely so that I keep these lovely, fresh, uh, transparent washes. And then as soon as it's dry, I shall continue with the painting and I shall map out where I'm going to put my cottage and my trees. So here's the dry washes and you can see, if you look carefully, you can see right in the middle I've got my cottage and some trees and the impression of a bit of foliage around the base of the cottage. Now I'm not worried that I've placed my cottage right in the middle. Um, a lot of people say to avoid that and try and put your sort of focal area to one side or another, a third in, a third out, a third up or a third down. But these rules are made to be broken and so today I'm going to show you how you can create an interesting composition using a centralised focal point. Of course, if you try something like this, you can pull your um, cottage and trees across towards the left edge if you prefer to follow the rule of thirds. So a quick cup of coffee and now I'm going to start painting um, the foliage and bushes and shrubs across the bottom of the trees and the bottom of my cottages. For this, I'm going to start off using my Escoda Ultimo um, size 14 mop brush. It's a synthetic mop and I'm going to just use indigo to start with, putting it in quite watery and then dropping in darker, richer, um, less watery paint so that I get some variety and just roughly dancing the brush across the page to give me these kind of very loose marks that will suggest um, the bushes and the shrubs. Softening off with a small squirrel mop and then just adding in a few finer details with a small calligraphy brush. Again, it's another unbranded brush that I found online a couple of years ago. Any small brush with a good point will do the same job for you. 
Now I've got my foliage roughed in, um, I'm going to paint in my buildings. So using a nice dark mixture of uh, Payne's Grey and Indigo, um, I'm just using a three quarter inch flat brush to very lightly paint in the shape of the roof. I'm only using the tips of the brush, so I'm testing the brush on my palette to make sure it's not blobby and it's giving me this nice fine line. And I can do the same for this sort of porch area or smaller sort of shed or cottage towards the side of the larger one. I think I need a little bit more um, foliage just to balance out and to bring across this porch or shed roof. So using the small calligraphy brush again I'm just adjusting it. This is the thing as you go it's good to be able to see where things need to have little adjustments made um, as you paint. So I'm beginning to put in some of the dark shadows on the building underneath the eaves and also putting in some textures to kind of um, imitate or suggest the look of a tiled roof. And then because watercolour always dries back quite a lot lighter, I'm adding in a few more darks into the dry foliage um, and bushes on the left of the cottage. I can build up the darks like that. Whenever things dry back a bit too light, just go back in and bring those contrasts out because they really help to make the, the painting work. So now I'm going to use the small calligraphy brush to go over my pencil guidelines and paint in my winter trees. I chose winter trees for this because, or bare trees, to sort of add to the desolate feel of the painting, sort of the atmosphere, I think works really well with just these quite stylized bare branches. And in a way, by keeping the tree right over on the left, and using it to sort of almost frame across the cottage, then we can balance out the composition more. So even though the cottage is, is pretty much in the middle of the composition, having the heavy weight of the bushes and the tree on the left is what helps to balance things out a little bit more. Um, and I like to leave all that sort of space on the right side of the cottage. And I think that space gives the painting sort of room to breathe. Next, I'm gonna take my three quarter inch flat brush and using a mixture of um, yellow ochre, a bit of burnt sienna and a touch of alizarin crimson, I'm gonna texture the house. So I'm pulling across um, a very watery glaze of these colours and you can see that the sky colours are showing through beneath that transparent glaze and they are helping to give us these lovely textures. I can go over and just put a bit more weight into that colour and I'll still get the sky colours um, showing through this glaze a little bit and that will just give me a bit more interest, a little bit more of um, suggestions of the texture of the roofs and the walls. Negatively painting to reveal um, sort of veranda windows or a large sort of picture windows in the smaller porch and then using a small flat brush I think it's only about a quarter of an inch maybe slightly smaller I'm going to put in the detail um, just very lightly of the window frames I 
I can darken things up. I can lighten things off just by lifting out a bit of colour if I need to. But I'm just making my adjustments just so that I can keep the building very simple, but hopefully effective just by getting the darks in the right place. And then with my large Pro Art Ron Ranson Harky brush and some indigo and a couple of sweeps, I can put some foreground, just darken it up a little bit more. The flowers will show through this as it dries because um, of the transparent nature of watercolour. I can add in some yellow ochre to brighten things up a little bit in the foreground and to add a little bit more texture. Just dabbing away with the tips of the Harky brush, it's a really useful brush for these broad sweeps that suggest rather than um, show overt detail. And then back to my plastic card and I'll just scrape through a little bit of detail through that wet paint um, just to bring out a few more highlights into the foreground, but nothing too much because the foreground isn't the focus here. And now just back to a few finishing touches here and there. So dabbing out a little bit of paint where it's a bit dark. A few more branches. This time using the sword liner to put in a few sort of lines and marks to show sort of bare branches coming out of the bushes. That's a pro art small sword liner. It's a synthetic brush and it's really useful. So then pulling a few branches across the front of the building and that straight away pushes the building back a little bit further in the mid-ground. A final glaze of yellow ochre to brighten up the building so it, it stands out more against the sky. And then a few final darks, darkening up that roof with the tips of the flat brush. And I think I'm pretty much finished now. I think that looks okay. So I'm going to pull off the tape and have a look and see how it looks with its clean white border, which always helps us to see it in a new light. So I've placed it against a clean board and we can see it a bit more easily away from the painting board. And I think it needs just a little bit of adjustment. Um, the foliage and bushes just below the trees um, needs to have a little bit more detail put into a very plain spot. Um, so I'm just going to use my small calligraphy brush and put in a small amount of detail just across that pale area there, a few dots and lines and marks, just to have a slightly more convincing bit of raggedy foliage um, across it there. And I think there's a final detail as well. Um, I'm just going to use the tips of the flat brush and put in a bit of siding or planking across the face of this wall here. And that's it, that's the finished painting. I really enjoy this sort of wet in wet technique because um, no two paintings will ever turn out the same. Um, you'll always get very different effects, even if you choose similar subject matter. So if you paint along with this, don't worry if your sky ends up looking different to mine because it, it, it needs to and it should do. It should look like your own sky. Um, that's what you're aiming for with this technique. It's not a technique that you can control. It's unpredictable, but that's part of the excitement of painting in this sort of semi-abstract way. So if you enjoyed that, please um, give us a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to my channel. It's free and it really helps me with my reach. And thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group, 
who support this channel. Thanks so much and I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.